soon, okay. several black SUVs pulled the van over, pulled the volunteer who was driving the van this out, and had him on the ground at gunpoint. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the very first episode of Youth Group Chronicles. Joining me here today, I have Isaiah Smallwood. This is going to be super cool. This is going to be wild. Yeah. The I'm stuff excited. that I have found on the internet <laughs> about youth ministry, youth pastors, youth kids is just wild. The things that they say, the things they do. This is from forums on the internet, pastors that I have asked oh personally, gosh. like, hey, what's the wildest thing that's ever happened in youth group? And of course, they all have like wild stories. I'm excited to see what you read. I really am. This is going to be so dope. <laughs> all right. Brianna. So when we were uh, youth, we took two vans to or near the Washington, D.C. area for some youth conference. On the way to D.C., I was in the van that was leading, and we thought it would be hilarious to put up in the windows of the van that we were Don't being say, kidnapped. Help me. Oh my no, no, no. They said they were being kidnapped. <laughs> Hey. We thought only the van following us could see. So I guess they had, there were two vans going to DC. <laughs> in DC? They want to do this in all places. <laughs> Soon, okay. several black SUVs pulled the van over, pulled the volunteer who was driving the van this out, and had him on the ground at gunpoint. This is phenomenal. <laughs> Other officers quietly opened up the back doors of the van <laughs> and instructed us all to get out and then asked each of us individually if we knew where our parents, uh, where we were, where our parents lived, if we felt safe, and how long we had been missing. <laughs> In the meantime, our youth pastor pulled the van that was following over to assist his volunteer, and he ended up getting held at gunpoint oh my gosh. and questioned because of his association with the suspect. They ended up calling each of our parents, the church, the persons in charge of the conference, our hotel, and the senior pastor, uh, the youth pastor thankfully had all our registrations and other paperwork, so it helped us out a lot. Yeah. After what seemed like forever, but was probably only an hour or so, we were let go. Nah. We all got a really long talking to when we finally got back to the hotel, and that's why today, as a youth leader, I have rules about what can be done in my van. <laughs> oh my gosh. First of all, first things first, that's phenomenal. <laughs> I've... I've <laughs> I've I've heard of like the help me signs, <laughs> but they said kidnapping. They wrote kidnapping. <laughs> That's crazy. In Washington D.C. Yeah, of all places, the most like highly secured location of all the United States, except for Area Fifty One. <laughs> <laughs> and you want to put this? That is. Uh... A classic youth group move right there. That was, that's like, it's tar, It's hard to top that story. There's like a lot that I have, but that was like the best opening one for this podcast. That's the, best, I was, that's I the one of one? The, the one of one. I couldn't wait to tell one? that one. That's crazy. This <laughs> but crazy. there's some other crazy stuff. Okay, this was from uh, Stephen Bailey. My pastor made me stay in a, <laughs> I remember this one. My oh, pastor God. made me stay in a horrible hotel with our students once. The hotel was so bad, there was a swingers party openly happening on our floor. This is a youth group went to this hotel. The pastor's daughter saw two people having sex since their door was open. I had to call the police to the hotel to help sort it out with the hotel staff. <laughs> two of the guys from the party yelled to me and another pastor. No. And they're like, were you the two guys that called the police? My pastor friend immediately yells back. Apparently he had like, no chill. Were you the two guys having sex? <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> The police told us both to keep it down. It was an awkward conversation with my pastor that day, but I tried to warn him and he told me the hotel was fine. I want to know, was it a Motel 6? That or has like, Motel 6 written all Motel over it. Motel 6 all over it. <laughs> well, Party. the best part is the pastor was like, no, it's cool. Like, this is a fine hotel. It's probably like 70 bucks a night or less. <laughs> yeah, they probably did. They probably had it in the budget. Right, let's, let's get in the budget. Let's do it. <laughs> Zach Hartman. We were having a Nerf war and an emergency phone in the safety closet got knocked off the hook and that phone goes directly to 911. Oh lord, goodness. So the operator hears kids yelling and screaming in the background as we're playing Nerf. So in our small town, they sent every cop on duty to the church. That must have been like three cops. <laughs> Probably three cops, but still. <laughs> that I must imagine. have been like the most action they've seen in years. A small town, can you yeah. imagine? You're just like, this is our, this is our big break. 
That's crazy. <laughs> We're going to be on the news. <laughs> we got to handle this seriously. Okay, so this same guy, Zach, he sent another story. He said, we did a freshman kidnapping. And he said, I told, <laughs> he said, I told every team not to throw their kids in the trunk of a car. Two things. Number one, kidnapping. Maybe, maybe not. Number two, teams. They I had they multiple kidnapped. people kidnapping yeah. multiple people. Yes. This is phenomenal. I want to hear it. So we did a freshman kidnapping, and I told every team not to throw their kids in the trunk of a car. Just to blindfold them. Disclaimer, <laughs> not the trunk. <laughs> <laughs> Just blindfold them and tape their hands and feet. Oh, However, man. one team with a leader decided to put a kid in the trunk of his car, and while driving, the kid got the tape off. Yep. So they pulled over on the side of a road to retape him. And when they opened the trunk, the up. kid booked it down the road. Oh my gosh. They chased him with masks <laughs> <laughs> down the road and finally caught him. As they pulled into the church, I guess he's back in the trunk at this point. Oh my As they pulled into the, the church parking lot, Five every cops. cop on duty pulled in and pulled guns and tasers on oh my leader. My God. He kept walking toward them and was one step away from being tased before I pulled or into shot. the parking lot. Or, or shot. shot. Pulled in the parking lot myself. The police department just asked that I give them a heads up next time. Like, it's hey, okay know, for them to keep doing it. I know it. you want to kidnap people. Just let us know <laughs> before you... <laughs> let us know. I don't, like, kid, I don't know how they found out. Someone must have seen some kid getting chased down the road. Yeah. I want to know if this was like broad day or was it nighttime? Because if it's broad day, then yeah, they probably had a few folk pass by and be like, those are masks. <laughs> those are masks and that's a child. Or if it was nighttime, Lord knows what could have happened. That's crazy. <laughs> That's wild. All right. This is from Celeste. So we were playing a game of dodgeball outside and one of the kids got bored while waiting to get back in the game. He had the bright idea. He decided to jump from the church porch to a nearby tree branch. The kid barely missed the branch, landed face down, breaking both wrists. I had to call an ambulance. <laughs> Let's go on to the next one. <laughs> I don't even. There's no comment on that one. There's no, yeah. This one is from Jody. At a camp out, a girl was panicked because she could not get the contact out of her eye. <laughs> <laughs> As <an omelette. laughs> She tried for a while and then begged me to do it. That's, uh, I took a fortifying else's breath. Fingers in your eyes. So she said, I took a big breath and reminded myself that. I'm the youth pastor and took several swipes at her eye. Oh Nothing. my God. At this point, the entire cabin is now crowding around to see what's going on. Several more swipes. And I realized that she had dropped the contact somewhere on the floor and it wasn't in her eye at all. I hope, I hope to goodness <laughs> to God himself that she washed her hands before swiping at this woman's eye multiple times. I really hope that. Okay. Laura Fisher. I once had to breathe on a kid's toes because they couldn't follow directions. I'm from Louisiana and took some kids to Washington DC for the March for Life. They had never seen snow. After an extensive parent, me <laughs> extensive parent meeting discussing, discussing appropriate clothing and footwear, a student wore canvas shoes in the snow in negative oh, degree Lord. weather. They found the biggest snow mound and hopped in. A little while later, the screaming and crying pain set in. That actually sucks. Yeah, that hurts. Yeah, a ton. If you're not from the East Coast, that hurts. It really does. Can you imagine coming from the South and that happening? Yeah. She said, we had to dry her feet with my shirt while we were waiting for the volunteer to bring shoes. In desperation from the kids' cries, I just started breathing on her toes, trying to warm them up. She wasn't alone because, the, <laughs> because a girl in Uggs found out snow melts and her shoes were like giant sponges. We had to literally carry them out in the crowd over our shoulders uh, to get them to warm up. Wow. I have yeah, to apply the, the youth pastor on that one. That, that was suck, good though. thinking. Yes. That was great thinking. Paula Bumgarner, in a small group meeting on our mission trip, kids were talking and laughing, and one of the boys made a joke about my age. In my best draw, I said, the Holy Spirit will strike you down. On the way downstairs, he forgot to duck. Granted, there was a sign. Smacked his head and dropped like a rock. He was okay. The kids laughed. But now no one comments on my age. <laughs> Hey, praise God. Hey, I'll take it, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good timing, though. Protection. <laughs> <laughs> Ashley Dobbs, my youth pastor in high school caught a snake at church camp, but he picked it up by the end of its tail and it bit him. My brother then proceeded to kill the snake with a rock, 
brought it back to camp <laughs> in his shoe. In <laughs> he brought it back in his shoe for proof and in case it was poisonous for him to take to the ER. That's smart, actually. That is really. I That's didn't actually think smart. of that. But I, I thought he killed it as, like, out of anger. He said, you stuck me. <laughs> Armando says, a teen parent had their youngest call me to ask what time I was heading home from a trip uh, that I was taking with uh, the students on. I didn't understand the question being that I was at my house and not on a trip with teens. I quickly realized that the teen had lied to her parents about this, quote, oh, trip man. and snuck out with her boyfriend. Oh, of course. <laughs> this, is, this is classic youth group right here, too. I called his, his family and they told me where he would be. So I drove over there and I picked up I picked up the girl myself and took her back to her parents' house. And ironically, they ended up getting married years later and also having kids. But wow, did she get in trouble? All right, <laughs> I'd have flipped out. That's all I know. I'd have flipped <laughs> out, bro. Like, you gonna throw me under the bus like that? Say I'm on a youth trip? I'd have flipped out. Okay, this was super funny. I have like a bunch of sh- like super short what youth kids have said. Jen said she had a youth kid tell her. I wish I had a job like Pastor Jen. She doesn't have to do any real work. (laughs) (laughs) Katie says, a 12-year-old boy asked me, if I gave birth to the Antichrist, do I go to hell? It is a boy that asked it, so kind of disqualifies it. But that is actually super funny. Then yes. (laughs) (laughs) Trent said, I just showed up to the gym uh, that one of my students' dads operates. Student, why are you so dressed up? Me. I came straight from work. Student. Oh, well, where do you work at? Me. Uh, the church, bro. The student. You're telling me you actually do work there? <laughs> Kids are wild. Literally, like a month ago, I'm helping my customer out. He used to be my youth kid, right? <laughs> he looks at me and says, mid-conversation, he's just like stuck. He's like, wait. Why are you here? Don't you work for the church? I'm like, bro, I'm just a youth leader. It's volunteer. I'm not paid staff. This is crazy. It's like, did you get fired from the church, bro? <laughs> Fernando. I had a youth kid ask me once, do you like do anything during the week when there's no youth group or? Valid question, though. Valid question. Valid question. Though. Between the, oh, you actually work for the church yeah. and do you do anything? I feel like every youth pastor has gotten that. Shelby. I told a group of youth I was colorblind. And one kid goes, dead serious. He goes, how many fingers am I holding up? (laughs) (laughs) I have so many jokes about that one, but I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. Kristen, overheard on a high school road trip. Student one, whoa, look at that big graveyard. Student two, well, that's not a graveyard. That's a cemetery. Student three, wait, what's the difference? Student two, graveyards are haunted. Student one and three. Oh, this is crazy. All right, I have one more. Uh, this is from Chris, the chairman of the deacons to the students. He said, what is the most important belief we have as Baptists? And a student from the crowd says, we must beat the Methodists to the Mexican <laughs> restaurant. <laughs> Kids are absolutely savage. Dude. That's, That's so wild. great. Because <laughs> I bet somebody has said that at that church. I put money. Yep, they That's hear it, so they repeat funny. it. Well, dude, that was... That was wild. Yeah, this is crazy. <laughs> this is crazy. I'm excited for the next episode. I appreciate everybody listening. This was super cool. Um, if you have stories, we want to hear them. Yeah, send them in. So definitely send them in. But Isaiah, thanks so much, man. This is super Yeah, fun. man. Thanks for watching this episode of Youth Group Chronicles. If you have a story that you want to send into the show, you can email us at ygchronicles at gmail.com. You might just make it on an episode. Please like, subscribe, and then turn on the notification bell so that you can get notified when we drop a new episode. Next thing, this is a YouTube video that YouTube thinks you're going to like. So check it out. Thanks for watching the show.